Good morning, folks. The Real Captain Kirk here live from Weather Trends 360 Studio here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. It is the 9th of September. Really cool animation here of Dorian as it's a lifespan here. A satellite imagery shows it going through the, the Windward Islands, and then uh, it'll go just to the um, east of Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands there. And then it, uh, it's a weaker system, and then as it got out into the open Atlantic here, again, it started to really intensify. You'll see the eye form here. Uh, really tightly compacted, uh, again at this point, uh, Cat 5 system, uh, plowed right through the Bahamas obviously. Sadly, st uh, just stalled right over the Bahamas for almost a day, uh, which is catastrophic damage. Weakened as it was off the coast of Florida and then gained a little bit of intensity, again back to Cat 3 briefly, uh, and then just missed South Carolina but went through the uh, Outer Banks as a landfall with 110 mile per hour wind uh, reported in uh, Cedar Island, North Carolina on Cape Hatteras. Um, so again, a Good news, it's in the history book at this point. Um, this may be history books here. We'll see. Uh, a wave a buoy off of uh, Newfoundland, uh, Canada, reported a 100.7 foot wave uh, just yesterday. Uh, the perfect storm is an example back in 1991, which is a combination of a cold core fall system uh, and a Cat 1 hurricane uh, ultimately created a 100.1 foot wave. Uh, so we'll see. This could be a record here uh, with Dorian. Again, a buoy reported this just off of uh, Newfoundland uh, yesterday, I believe. Uh, looking at the tropics here over the next 14 days, again, something to watch here. Uh, Gabrielle will stay out as a fish storm. The little weak system, again, going through the uh, Bahamas has a very low chance of developing. Let's hope it stays that way. Uh, unfortunately, we got to watch that uh, second system out in the central Atlantic here. GFS at least tries to make a big, you know, major hurricane out of this and take it right up the east coast and plow it uh, into the New York, New Jersey area. We'll see about that. That's 14 days out there, so just a model imagination at this stage. But again, tis the season. It's the peak of the hurricane season, so something to watch. But uh, for now, about a week lull, and uh, we'll see what happens here this time next week. Um, thought we'd do a quick history lesson here of uh, U.S. landfalling hurricanes over the past 168 years, going back to 1851 or so. Um, by no means are these hurricanes uh, either more frequent or, you know, in, in theory more intense. Um, this is all hurricanes. Again, you can see the, the stronger ones are the yellows, the oranges, and the reds. And uh, actually, they peaked in terms of major hurricanes back in uh, the 1940s uh, when we had, um, oh, we had about 10 major U.S. landfalling hurricanes, 24 hurricane landfalls. Um, 1881, uh, many, many, many moons ago, obviously, would rank number two in terms of uh, major landfalling hurricanes. Um, so again, um, we've actually been a little bit of a downward trend here in terms of the U.S. We can look at this trend globally. Uh, this is a global tropical cyclone frequency. Top blue line is uh, tropical storm trends uh, globally, uh, name systems. Hurricanes uh, are on the bottom here, the, the black gray line. And again, the trend is slightly down in terms of the, the frequency of events uh, since 1970. In fact, if we looked at this going back to those 1930s, 1940s, and 1800s, we'd probably see even a more downward trend in terms of uh, the frequency of hurricane activity. Uh, this is a little more telling method. Uh, this is called accumulated cyclone energy. This measures both the longevity and the intensity of hurricanes. And this shows, again, just satellite era, unfortunately, uh, 1970 forward. Um, so again, this is the ACE index. And so that gray line is hurricane activity. Slight upward trend. Again, this is a global activity. Uh, but if we were able to take this back to the 1930s, 1940s, we'd probably see a flat downward trend. So again, uh, nothing terribly unusual. Again, the ACE index uh, here globally did peak in 93. Um, and it's, again, it's been on a little bit of a decline. In fact, we went to a major decline, uh, obviously, with that 11-year uh, drought of no major landfalling hurricanes in the U.S. Uh, that was broken with uh, Harvey uh, a couple years ago. Uh, I always say if you live in these areas in the tropics, obviously, you got to be prepared that eventually you're going to get hit. This is a 168 years of hurricane tracks, and this is uh, 70 years of uh, major hurricane Cat 3, Cat 5 tracks. So again, you live in the tropics, you live in the south, uh, unfortunately you just have to contend with these and eventually you will get hit. Um, sadly, uh, Sandy is nothing compared to some of the 1800, uh, 1930 systems that have hit uh, the northeast. So again, um, you put poor, more, millions more people on beaches and islands, uh, and unfortunately millions more people in harm way. So again, hopefully we're just about done with the hurricane season. Got another month or so to go, uh, but uh, again, um, uh, let's hope for the best here. Looking at this week, 9 through 15 September, again, the map on the right is high temps versus average. Uh, again, a warming trend. Um, this could be a little bit of risky if you put a trough in the west and a, and a ridge in the east. Um, you do make the east coast uh, somewhat of a threat here for tropical landfalling activity along the east coast, so we're definitely going to have to watch next week. Overall, warmest in 14 years, second warmest in 30 for the nation as a whole. Dries in three, 14th dries in 30 with near average rainfall on a national scale. 
jumping ahead to next week, 16 through 22 September. Again, you see that East Coast. Again, this is just the GFS for sure is thinking it's going to slam a, a major hurricane along the East Coast, way out there in model imagination land. Uh, so I wouldn't get too too worried about it yet. But again, we are in the peak of the season, so something to watch. Uh, overall, a little bit cooler in, la in five years, actually, uh, for the nation as a whole. Uh, but very warm east and uh, cool toward the Rocky Mountains. Tenth warmest in 30 years, so above average nationally next week. Drier than last year, six west in 30 years above average. So uh, again, just something to watch here later next week, uh, way out there to watch the east coast. Tis the, tis the season. Looking at the world outlook overall here, 9 through 22 September. Max temps versus average on the right. Um, U.S. again, above average, but cooler than last year. Europe cooler than last year, but still quite warm. Canada is finally, after so such a cold trend, Canada is warmer than last year. Australia is warmer than last year, still winter. And Brazil is just uh, really, really hot weather down in Brazil. Um, so with that, folks, we hope you have a great week, and we will be back here this time next week.